Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is OMC's 1995 hit single, How Bizarre. And today's video is officially the most extreme cleanup that I've done on the channel. In fact, there are some things in this house that are so bad, I'm not gonna show them on video. Now, I have a lot to say about this house, how it got into this condition, my theories on how it got into this condition, as well as what we did, what we didn't do, and why we didn't do them. The cost of cleaning up a place like this, and how I had to break some of my own personal rules in order to even pull this off. So I hope I don't forget anything. I'll take it a little bit at a time because this is pretty overwhelming. So as with all the houses that I clean or most of them, I'm starting in the kitchen. And the reason that I do that is not only does it give you access to the sink, which you're going to need to clean a whole bunch of stuff, but once you get the kitchen cleaned out, it serves as your base of operations. It's where you're going to store all of your cleaning supplies, mops, brooms, rags, the severed butts of your fallen enemies. I'm I make necklaces out of the severed butts of the enemies that I've slain. And storing those in any other room outside of the kitchen is just kind of gross. But it also solves a more immediate problem, which in a house like this, food storage is always a problem. This house was absolutely infested with roaches, worse than any house that I've cleaned so far. So we had to throw out pretty much all of her dishes and almost all of her food. All of the dishes and cooking stuff that she had was so old that I didn't feel feel bad throwing it away and then we replaced everything. We ended up buying her new pots and pans, new dishes, drinking glasses, silverware, utensils, a cheese grater, colanders, pasta boiling pots, some fancy Tupperware bowls that are stackable, and then we replaced all of her groceries. Upon seeing the condition that everything was in, I couldn't morally let her keep anything that she had in there. Everything was covered in roach poop and there were so many roaches that they were just crawling on the floor. Just everywhere. They were crawling on the floor, cabinets, countertops, in broad daylight by the tens of thousands. The thing is, you can bring in an exterminator and they can attempt to get rid of the, the roaches, but in order to truly get rid of them, you need to take away their food stores and you need to take away their hiding spots. All the trash was acting as their hiding places and as their food source. So that's where we started. We start by just getting all the trash thrown away. Everything that's obviously junk goes in the trash. Once we're done cleaning the house, then an exterminator can come in and spray and it will be effective. But right now in this condition, you're just spinning your wheels because the poison that the roaches need to get into will never be touched. It'll just land on top of piles of trash and it'll never actually reach the roaches. Now I could just spin kick the roaches and they would all die immediately. The problem with that is it acts like kind of a shotgun shell effect where if I spin kick too hard, they'll blast through the sides of the house and then just blow straight through their neighbor's houses. And I don't want that. Nobody wants that. So we did the next best thing, which is throw away the trash and clean the place up. What happens is the roaches, once you take away that stuff, will go back into the, the walls where that's usually where their nests are. A lot of them will starve out and they'll go hunting for other sources of food. So the first kind of disturbing thing that we found in this house was that all of the groceries that she had just bought, as well as a bunch of old expired groceries, were just sitting in piles among the trash. Under that trash was an immense amount of dog and cat feces. Mostly cat, but I think there was a dog mixed in there at some point. There are no pets in the house right now, by the way. No pets and no children. So if you are ever considering doing this, cleaning for people for free, I get asked the question a lot, how do you do it? Where do you find the people? What's involved? I'm at a, a level right now where people find me, but when I first started, I just posted on local Facebook groups and told them what I do. Then the people who needed help typically would just come out of the woodwork and I would go do my thing. However, if you do a house like this, you need to be warned this is not truly free. I mean, it's free for them, but the first thing we had to do was get a dumpster and the 20 yard dumpster could not be delivered to their house because they had a delinquent trash bill. So we had to pay that too. The trash bill itself was $320 and the 20 yard dumpster was about $320 as well, somewhere in that area. We also broke one of my rules, which is we typically don't do this outside of my area. I almost always just do this within 30 miles of my home, but we had to travel three hours, two and a half to three hours down to this town, which meant getting a hotel as well, which also means eating at fast food restaurants, buying drinks, things like that. In all, by the time we were done, we spent around $1,500 to clean this place up. If she were to hire somebody to do this same job, a professional cleaner, 
you would be paying at least 10,000. And a house in this condition likely would go for more, 15 to $20,000. We filled 100 trash bags that are 50 gallons each, so 5,000 gallons of trash. We went through 200 pairs of gloves and probably about 20 masks. We started out with just black masks and then we switched to N95 on day two because the stuff that was in there was a little too toxic for my taste. Regular viewers of the channel know that I rarely wear masks and I rarely wear gloves. So if you see me wearing some in, in these videos, you know it's bad. We only had two days to do this job because of the expenses. So halfway through the kitchen, Jason broke off and started the living room. And there used to be multiple people living here. There's just a single person now. But when multiple people lived here, that's where they slept was the living room. So that's why there's a bed there. The kitchen and the living room were especially hard to clean because every time you pulled up anything from a surface, hundreds of roaches would swarm out. Now, I've got a bit of a stronger stomach, but Jason's not used to that. And so he really had to kind of steal himself every time he moved anything and kind of brace for impact when those roaches came out. I'm pretty proud of him because really there's a lot of people who would lift one thing, see all the roaches and then be like, nope, I'm out, son. Thank you, but no thank you. Thank you straight to hell. But he gritted his teeth and did it. He held up like a champ. And I'm really glad I had him there because if I were there by myself, this would take a week. And it was really, really exhausting to do a job like this, especially in a town far away from your own home. So you can't go back to your own bed and your own shower and eat your own food. It's mentally and physically exhausting. So how does a house get into this condition? Well, first off, it's important to note that this is not hoarding disorder. She had absolutely no problem with us trashing everything in the house if we needed to. This, in my experience, goes hand in hand with extreme PTSD and medically concerning levels of depression. Now, because this was likely PTSD, or I believe it to be PTSD related, I did not ask for her backstory. The main reason for that is if it is PTSD and she starts starts reliving the, that trauma, that can be super bad because I'm not a therapist. So I don't want to purposely drag that information out of her. But the reason I'm leaning toward PTSD is there's a sort of a personality that I've seen among sufferers of PTSD. Many of them can be really quiet and shy and almost kind of mousy. The ones that I've met don't tend to show excitement or a lot of emotion at all. You can kind of feel the emotional armor that they're wearing. Now, I know that's not all PTSD sufferers, but it's 
just something that af- as I deal with more and more people with mental illness, it's a common set of traits that I'm used to dealing with. So I'd rather just err on the side of caution and not ask for that backstory. But as I talked to her, I really got the impression that until we got there, she had basically just given up hope. And I didn't really need to talk to her to get that impression. You can look around the house and you can see it. You can feel it as you go from room to room. That's why we traveled down this far. Nobody deserves to live in that and nobody wants to live in that. This isn't a choice thing. It's not a quote unquote lack of motivation. It's not somebody being lazy. This is somebody neck deep in a swamp of depression. Now cleaning up doesn't do much to alleviate that, but it's a first step. If we can take away one of her sources of stress and this house would be a major source of stress, then it's one less thing that she has to deal with physically and mentally. And the less you're having to deal with outside of your mind and outside of your own body, the easier it is to deal with that universe that's going on inside of your head. One of the most common things I get asked is, aren't you afraid it's just going to go right back to that condition after you leave? And the answer to that is no. We came down there to do the mechanical job of cleaning up this house and giving her a blank slate. What she does with that after we leave is her thing. The truth is, it's highly likely that it will go back to that condition again, especially if she doesn't get help and therapy. But I'm not going to see somebody who's drowning and then just walk past them because they're likely to fall in the lake again. I'm going to help them out of the water, make sure they're okay, have a quick break dance battle with them, and then just be on my way. Now, I'm not entirely sure that she understands how bad this condition was. Because when we first talked, she said it was basically just cardboard boxes, food wrappers, and random trash. But it wasn't just that. There was feces everywhere. And we found so much rotting food. Food that had full-on liquefied inside of bags. We found mold, rot, live and dead bugs all over the house. And the bathroom had a pile of used toilet paper, pads, and tampons about three and a half feet tall. Now that said, let's talk about what we did versus what we couldn't do. Again, we had two days here, so time was of the essence. We spent two full days just taking trash out, which meant that we only had a couple of hours to do any real actual cleaning. So that time had to be spent on the most noticeable stuff, and we had to do a lot of sanitizing on the most important areas. We used Mr. Clean to get off all the crud because you have to do this in layers. You use an emulsifier like Mr. Clean or dish soap, any sort of soap based cleaner to get off the top layer of grime. Then we used a sanitizing spray to get rid of the bacteria that lied underneath that. The sanitizer I use is homemade. It boils down to 70% isopropyl alcohol and about five or six drops of Dawn dish soap. If that stuff makes contact with the surface for 30 seconds to a minute, that's enough to kill most of the bad stuff. Now, I would like to use bleach, but I'm actually allergic to bleach. But the alcohol solution that I use is the next best thing. For black mold, I use straight white vinegar. You just saturate that down. You don't want to spray that really close to the black mold because you'll blow out spores just from the pressure of the uh, vinegar hitting it. But I keep the sprayer about a foot away, saturate it all down, and then come back and respray it every few minutes until the whole thing is soaked. So we ended up cleaning the cabinets, drawers, shelving units, all the visible surfaces, but we didn't get things like the baseboards and heater vents. We weren't able to get the walls and the walls really needed it bad. And by the time we got to the bathroom, I just had to clean it as fast as possible because we were basically out of time. So I we cleaned all the floors with Lysol and anything we couldn't get off with a mop, we used a razor scraper to get that off the floor. So none of these rooms are going to be perfect. And in fact, the bathroom still looks kind of bad, but we at least made those rooms enough to where you can walk through them now without shoes on and it would be safe. But yeah, we didn't do any deep cleaning in here at all. We were just doing basic cleaning and spent two days getting the majority of the trash out. If we would have had another week, then we could have cleaned baseboards, walls, grout, ceilings, windows, the whole nine yards. But you'll see by the end of this video, we accomplished a lot in two days. So suck it.
We were able to save some food, and that was mostly in the form of canned food. And even then, I sprayed down the cans with my APC, the, the alcohol mixture, and then wiped them down really well before putting those in the cabinets. But even after saving as much food as we could, we still went to Walmart and restocked all of our groceries because I really felt bad about having to throw those things away. But I mean, man, they were just caked in roach poop. There's no way I was saving that. I mentioned earlier that we replaced a bunch of her kitchenware and, and dishes and utensils. One of the reasons I did that was actually there was a couple of reasons. One, she barely had any to begin with. And two, once things have been so saturated with that many roaches and that much roach poop, I'm not doing the dishes. I'm not going to make myself liable for trying to clean something and sanitize something that's that covered in toxic material. Because if I mess up or I don't get it clean enough and then she eats off of it and gets really sick, I have to live with that. Now she eats off of that stuff on her own accord. She's a full grown adult, more power to her. But as long as I'm helping in a house like this and I have the ability, I'm replacing all that stuff. And to the people who have memberships on this YouTube channel, you're the reason that we were able to make that happen. So sincerely, thank you. Also, the you're in that statement is spelled Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. It stands for you are. Your Y-O-U-R is possessive, as in your grasp of the English language is terrible. Anyway, that's my pet peeve. I'll feed that animal myself. We found a stash of trash on the back porch. We took it out and we swept it up, but the back porch itself was actually dangerous. You could feel where the floor had rotted through. So we just took the trash out, swept it real quick, and then we got the hell out of there. I didn't want myself or Jason in that room. Otherwise, we would have done the windows and mopped it. But as it sat, our biggest concern was just getting the old trash out so that it could stop rotting inside the house. Now the dishes and pans and groceries were right around $500, but that's because I don't skimp whenever it comes to stuff like that. I would rather spend a little bit more money and get a little bit better stuff that is going to last a little bit longer than to just buy the cheapest stuff they have and watch it break in a year's time. We also threw out all of our old spices and basically got her one of every spice that they had at the store. That's also overkill, but it was easier than just texting her and saying, hey, what spices do you like? We also bought her a replacement moose. Her old moose wasn't bad. It was just kind of a jerk and I don't really like to put up with jerk moose. So I just kind of shoot him away from her house and then bought a new one. I suppose any of the spices that she doesn't eat, the moose will probably eat. Because that's what moose eat. They eat moose spice. Mmm, is that oregano? Yes it is moose. Take a big old bite of oregano. Thank you. Mmm, now my tongue smells like a pizza. What? Nothing.
I mentioned there were no pets in here, but there was kitty litter in a cat box, and the stuff that was in the cat box was completely petrified. And the stuff around the cat box that you see me sweeping up, that was also petrified, and there was a lot of it. I mean, we could have filled a five-gallon bucket with all the feces we found in every room. So since there was a cat box, and since there was remaining cat litter, I just went ahead and filled the box just in case. I did check the next day, and nothing had used that, and there was no new poop anywhere. So I think the pets are long gone. A related side note, normally on a wood floor like this, I would use Murphy's to mop it. But because there was so much feces on every floor of the house, we used Lysol because that disinfects. The living room was the toughest room for me to do because that's where we found at least two nests of roaches. One was in the couch and the other one was in the bed. And they made their nests here because that's where all the food was and it's where all the trash was. So it provided them shelter and food. We found bags of salad that were still sealed and they'd sat there so long that they had liquefied. If you want to know how that feels, grab a Ziploc bag and fill it with just water. Warm room temperature water. Now fortunately, I couldn't see into it because the bag was opaque. Unfortunately, the smell was so bad it escaped the bag, and it smells like a mixture of raw sewage and death. That was so bad I wouldn't even let Jason in the room while I was cleaning it up because his stomach is way weaker than mine. He had already had a couple of incidents where he had to run outside because he thought he was going to be sick, and had he smelled that stuff, I guarantee he would have never made it outside. I, however, have done so many of these that I'm kind of desensitized to it now. I'm so used to it in fact that whenever I start cleaning a house like this I automatically stop breathing through my nose and start breathing through my mouth. That said the whole house didn't smell like that. The only weird smell that the house had was roaches have a very distinct smell to them. It's sort of a weird chemical smell and I don't know if everyone can smell that but I can. I can enter a house and be able to tell just by smell if the house has roaches or not. Now before we get too deep into the video there's a question that always comes up in, in my houses that I clean that are this bad, that are this extreme. People will ask me, where's the person at? Why aren't they helping you? And my thing is, whenever I come down to do these cleanings, I don't let them help. I don't let them pay me. I don't let them help. And if they're not working, I make them go find something fun to do. A large majority of what we're doing here is to alleviate people's stress. Cleaning is a part of that. But if another part of that could just simply be they sit back and watch their favorite TV show show or they go to the park or they go out to eat. To me, that's a part of the package deal. I want them to completely de-stress while I just turn into a cleaning tornado and do my thing. Yes, the people are often embarrassed, really embarrassed, and that's a good thing. It means they know that there's something wrong. It's a step in the right direction mentally, and to me, that's a positive thing. Getting through mental illness and learning to cope with it and deal with it and live with it outside of just outright curing it, that stuff is not resolved simply by cleaning the house. This is not a case of them needing to learn how to clean up after themselves. Most people know that you put trash in the trash can, that you wipe up spills, that you do your dishes. This is not caused by a lack of knowledge, and it sure as hell isn't caused by laziness. This is full-blown mental illness. This is what it looks like. I've had people on this channel tell me, oh BS, I've had four kids and four operations, and I'm disabled in my left leg, and I want to had a fist fight with the actual devil and I can still clean my kitchen. And it's like, okay, man, you are you. You're not dealing with mental illness. That's great that you can clean your own kitchen. This person can't but they can learn it. Mental illness is not a suck it up situation. A trashed out house is not the cause, it's a symptom. And being embarrassed and asking for help, that to me is more important and more significant than them actually cleaning up their house themselves. It means that they've one, recognized that there's a problem, and two, are actively seeking help. Because once I got here and I looked around this house, I realized that she's been sitting here not asking for help for years. Asking for help is a positive thing and it should not be met with punishment.
I ran into something that I've never ran into before in any house that I've ever cleaned. First, you need to know that when I was in college, one of my majors that I was studying was back then they called it abnormal psychology. I'm sure that now it has a way more appropriate name, but back then it was called abnormal psych. And that's where we studied things like schizophrenia, paranoid delusions, hoarding disorder was another. But nowhere in those studies and nowhere in the houses that I've cleaned in have I ever found another house where none of the storage was used. All the closets were empty, all the cabinets, all the drawers. Everything that she owned was out in the open. Nothing was put behind a door. I'd be interested to know the implications of that and common causes for that, or even if it's a common thing among people with mental illnesses, because I, I've never heard of it before. The reason I thought of it was all of her clothes were in baskets. She doesn't have a washer and dryer, otherwise we could have washed those and hung them up. But they had so many bugs and stuff in them that we didn't want to put them in the closet, so we just kept them out in the open. When Jason uh, ended up consolidating the clothing, he put them all in baskets and we just stacked those in the corner so they could be washed. But it was the same in the kitchen. There were no plates or glasses in any of the cabinets. No food was in the cabinets. In fact, there was some old food in one cabinet, but they were so old that it was like two loaves of bread had turned to dust and one of them was in the liquefied state. But other than that, there was, there was nothing in any cabinet. It made our job a little bit easier because it was easy to put things away because normally Normally, we have the opposite problem where all the storage is used and we have no idea where to put things. We have to get creative. Anyway, if there are any psychologists out there that have ran into that before, I'd love to hear from you. I'm positive that there's a severe ADHD component that goes with that, but I, I can't swear to that. There were two more important things that I did not clean in this house. One was the fridge because I never clean out fridges. I've got a strong stomach, but I can't handle liquefied food inside of a fridge. That is a smell that must have gotten to me as a child or something and I just can't handle it. The other is the bathtub. Part of that boiled down to just a matter of time and part of that boiled down to a matter of exhaustion. By the time we were done, both Jason and I had swollen muscles in our backs. It was hard to walk and even sitting down hurt and we still had a three hour drive back home after we left here on the second day. But we'll get to that part here in a little bit because I'm not quite to the bathroom yet. Right now, Jason's doing the bedroom and I'm doing the, the last of the living room, there was still a ton to do even after Jason spent a half a day on it. If you're looking in the background and you see that bucket, yes, that is exactly what you think it is. If you don't know what I mean by that, ignore it. Pretend I said nothing. Go on about your day, you're better off. The shelving units and the TV stand had so many dead bugs on it that I had to scoop them off. And if you've ever had roaches, you know they like to hang out around electronics. So usually you can find them underneath a TV stand stand and they'll be on the underside of the shelving. So whenever I clean these things off, I had to be careful because if I wasn't watching myself, you can wipe the underside of the shelving and knock live roaches off onto your hands and arms. Again, I've got a pretty strong stomach, but bleh.
Again, we clean those in layers. I use Mr. Clean's Clean Freak to get the main gunk off, and then I'll follow that up with the alcohol-based APC. That part's really important because that's powerful enough to kill roach eggs. It's also powerful enough to whenever it touches roaches, they just scurry away. It acts kind of like a repellent. Or I guess not kind of like a repellent. It literally repels them. So on top of wiping down all the shelving and stands with that, I also wipe down every component that we put on them. Shoes, books, hats. I even wiped down coins that I found. It was such a toxic atmosphere that when we finished this house, both Jason and I threw away our clothing, our shoes, all the rags that we used, all cleaning equipment, and then we even left all the chemicals there for her. I didn't want to take the chance on transferring roaches or bed bugs into my car and then into my house. So when we were done, we went back to the hotel, got showered, changed into new clothes, took a contractor bag and filled that with all of our work clothes, tied that up really tight and put it into a dumpster. Then we gave it the finger and drove off into the sunset going, whee! A couple more notes. I didn't clean underneath the couch cushions. I did take the trash and stuff out from underneath them, but I didn't spend any time doing an actual clean underneath there because those are both getting tossed. She just has to have somebody come and haul them away. It's the same thing with the bed in the living room. I didn't replace the sheets or anything because it's immediately getting tossed. That bed is absolutely infested with bugs. So the only thing I did whenever I, I finished clearing off the top of it was I just shook the sheet off and then put it back in a way that made it look more pleasant than what it did. And then at some point, you'll see me sweeping off this brown powder off of one of the other couches. That spilled cocoa. Meanwhile, Jason is in the bedroom doing his thing. He got as best he could underneath that bed, but off camera, I ended up moving the bed and getting everything out from underneath it because in a place like this, everything migrates under everything else. And unfortunately, there wasn't a lot he could do with this room because one, there wasn't much room to begin with. It was a pretty small room. And two, there wasn't really much you could do in terms of decorating. So I told him, just get all the trash out, consolidate all the clothes, straighten up as best you can and to keep in mind that his goal was not to make this pristine his goal is to make it livable and for what he had to work with I thought he did a pretty good job when time is your enemy on a place like this you have to clean via priority safety first make everything safe then livable so in other words she was sleeping on half her bed because the other half was buried in trash livable would be removing that trash so she could sleep on her whole bed then make it pretty then make it fancy I think in those four stages, we basically made it to the livable stage. If we would have had two more days, we could have deep cleaned everything and made it pretty. And then another day after that, we could have made it fancy because that's just buying new curtains, painting the walls, making repairs and whatnot. If you want to see us do things like that in videos, I do have those on the channel. But those were places that were close to where I live so we could spend weeks there rather than two days.
outside of the biohazard elements of this house, and there were biohazard elements, there's only one thing I ran into that caused me a lot of concern. They have heating radiator vents on the bottom of the floor. And those things do get pretty hot. There was a piece of plastic that had melted onto one of them, but there was also a handheld butane torch sitting right on top of another. That didn't just concern me, that scared me because when I picked it up, it was hot to the touch. I took that thing outside as soon as I found it, just in case. And then the other thing you have to keep in mind when you're doing a place like this is that there's a lot of toxic elements to it that are being shielded by the actual trash. So for instance, all the floors were covered in pet poop and there was black mold and there was rotting food but they were sitting under piles of garbage that shield of fast food wrappers and bags and old pizza boxes prevent things like black mold spores from becoming airborne and any crazy viruses can be contained underneath that pile so when you start moving those things and you start stirring things around you can make them become airborne that's my biggest concern in doing such an extreme cleanup like this everything has to be delicately handled and you have to have the proper gear. If you've watched the channel for a while, you know how ironic that is because I hardly ever wear PPE. I know it's dumb. It's me, it's a me thing. But in a house like this, I'm absolutely wearing a mask and I'm absolutely wearing gloves. Every time you see a camera cut, we're changing gloves. Every time you see a camera cut, we're also using hand sanitizer clear up to our elbows. And when we shower after a job like this, we don't even use water. We use straight flamethrowers. So that's how I roll, son. One of the other things we do is before we get in the car, we spray our shoes and pants off with APC, especially whenever you're in a place that has roaches or bed bugs. You don't want to risk taking those things home with you. And they hate APC too. They're all like, please don't shoot me with the APC. I'm just a friendly bug. Shut up, talking bug.
Okay, the bathroom. There are certain things I'm not going to show you in here. I'm not going to show you the cleaning of the toilet inside or out. Even for me, it's just too much. I did it. I filmed it. I watched it back and said, no, let's just keep this off the video. The toilet also has a problem with being anchored to the floor on one side and not the other, and it's cracked on the backhand side. So it's going to have to be replaced. Again, I didn't do the bathtub. I rinsed it off. I got the hair out, but I didn't scrub it. And then I didn't clean the grout. And if I would have gotten against the baseboards, I would have had to have done that by hand with a scouring pad. So I just got it as best I could with a mop. Again, we were right down to the end of that day. And all I wanted to do was sanitize this bathroom and at least make it to where people could enter it again. So it got cleaned, but it didn't get deep cleaned by any means. And as with all these rooms, we didn't do the walls either. I swept all the cobwebs off of them, but we didn't scrub it down. And it pretty desperately needs it. Every wall in every part of this house all needs clean. Oh, by the way, I get asked that a lot. I say things like it needs cleaned rather than it needs to be cleaned. That's a Midwest thing. It may even be a Southern thing. That's just the way we all say it around here. And no, I'm not changing my vocabulary to suit fancy people who say fancy strong words. That's why they call me old Johnny Wrong Word back in Portland. Yo, man, is that old Johnny Wrong Word? I don't know. Let's listen to him speak and see if he sounds stupid. I bet he does. The last room we had to do was the office, and it was almost entirely trash. Underneath that trash was enough old petrified pet poop to fill a five gallon bucket. I did show myself sweeping some of that up, but I kept the majority of it off camera. You're welcome. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. The thing that Jason had the biggest problem with was there were hundreds upon hundreds of old partially filled drinking cups from McDonald's and Casey's or whatever, and over time those had begun 
began to rot. The look, texture, and smell of those things were so bad, that's what set Jason's stomach off. So there's a large part of this room that I just, I had him go do something else while I filled the trash. Then after that room was done and we had everything picked up, we just swept again, and then every room got mopped three times. In between each mopping, we changed the mop water out and made brand new. After the initial mop, we threw that mop away, then got a brand new one, did the second mop with that, then threw that one away, and did the final mop with a brand new mop. So we used three brand new mops in order to mop this house. Because the floors were so bad that they got the mops so dirty that the mops were useless after a bit. If you didn't know, we have a members only section. That's what really makes it to where we can do this stuff. There's three tiers. The lower tier gets you access to Discord. If you get that, you'll have to Google how to use Discord. I get questions on it all the time, but I don't have time to answer those. But there's a healthy amount of us in there who just kind of hang out and BS with each other. The second tier gets you an extra video once per week. The third tier is just for people who have the money to want to give some extra to the channel. As always, if you can't afford to do something like that, do not become a member. I would much rather you put that money to use for yourself than for us. We're doing just fine. You can also find my real Facebook, the one that doesn't have my videos stolen, and the link to that is in the description along with the link to our merch store where you can find t-shirts and coffee mugs and all kinds of stuff with a lot of our dumb, silly phrases that we say here on the channel. But all that aside, the number one thing you can do to help this channel without having to pay anything 
whatsoever is just hit the subscribe button. We're closing in on half a million subscribers and at 1 million we get a gold plaque and that's really the only thing that I want out of this whole channel on a personal level is the gold plaque. Other than that, I have a new video every Friday or Saturday. So if this is your first time here, come back. We've got lots of cool stuff. We do as much as we can to help as many people as possible. And that's everything from cleaning their house to helping out people with hoarding disorder to repairing drywall and painting people's houses. We do everything possible to help people out in my area. At some point in the future, we'll be traveling to do these, but we have no idea when that's going to be. When I'm able to travel, I will make an announcement here on YouTube and on Facebook. Members, I will see you this Wednesday. Everybody else, I'll see you next weekend. Later.